because the church goes beyond the preacher the church goes beyond the choir the church goes beyond the position the church is all about Jesus Christ But for tonight, again, I'm grateful for uh, Minister Thomas. And at this time, I'm going to make sure she's spotlighted and we're going to turn it over to her and she will bless us the remainder of this evening. God bless you, Minister Thomas. It's all yours. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. It is a good day to be alive in Christ Jesus. Amen. And it is a blessing and a privilege to be able to come to you on Wednesday with Word on Wednesday. I thank God for our pastor who trusts us uh, to uh, deliver the Word in this new format. It's not necessarily a sermon. It's not necessarily a teaching, but maybe you'd consider it a one-sided sort of conversation that hopefully provokes thought uh, and gives you a reason to uh, think about and even go back and read about of the characters that we bring to you or the scriptures that we bring to you each and every Wednesday. And so I thank God for the opportunity. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, how wonderful you are in all your ways. Truly, there is none like you in all the earth or the heavens above. You do things, Father God, that are far beyond our ability to comprehend. And unless you reveal it to us, we remain in darkness. We thank you, Father God, that that is not your desire, for you said that if we ask, we should receive. And so we come seeking, Father God, a closer relationship with you, uh, to know you better and to know ourselves better, that we might be pleasing in your sight. So we ask your Holy Spirit to come, to lead us and guide us uh, in this word on Wednesday and have your way in each and every heart. May our ears and our hearts be open and receptive to what you are saying, and we will be mindful to give you all glory, honor, and praise. It is in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. So again, it's good to be with you this evening. Uh, tonight, I have a question for you. The question is, are you ready now? Are you ready now? And I'll be coming to you from the Gospel of John, chapter 21. The Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. Uh, again, that's the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, P Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word. Hallelujah. And so the question is, are you ready now? As I read uh, through these scriptures and actually through the entire uh, chapter of the Gospel of John, it struck me that Jesus would have to ask Peter that question at all. Because if you look back on the story of Peter, and for those of you who may not be familiar with the relationship between Peter and Jesus, you can read any of the gospels, Matthew, uh, Mark, or Luke, and they will give you um, detail uh, about the uh, relationship between Peter and Jesus. I'm just gonna summarize for you. When uh, Peter heard that Jesus was on the scene, he dropped everything and followed Jesus. It was Peter who said, when asked, who do, the, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Messiah. You are the son of God. That was Peter that said that, amen. It was also Peter though that said, uh, you will have no parts of washing me when Jesus offered to wash 
uh, Peter's feet. Peter loved Jesus so much that he thought it was beneath Jesus to wash his feet. And so he said no. It was also Peter when uh, Jesus was captured by, or when he turned himself over in actuality, but when he was captured by uh, the soldiers, it was Peter in, in an attempt to defend Jesus who cut off the ear of the soldier. Peter was one of the three that was very close to Jesus and was invited to the garden of Gethsemane to sit and watch and pray with Jesus as he contemplated the fact that the time of his death was near. It was Peter who was invited to the Mount of Transfiguration along with James and John. And so if we were to think about that and all the things that happened in uh, Peter's relationship with Jesus, we could say, well, of course, Peter loved Jesus. That is, that's obvious. There could be no doubt that, that Peter loved Jesus. He dropped everything that he knew and followed after him. He stood up with him and stood with him for as long as he could. And he did all of that out of love. And so the question I have for you, what, what sparked this conversation, if you will, tonight is, well, if Peter had already displayed his love for Jesus, why would Jesus then ask him, do you love me? And why would he ask him that three times? And that's what I'm gonna ask you. It's the question that the Lord asked me. And at first I thought it was just for me, uh, but then I felt led to share it. Are you ready now? I believe that in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of uh, this election cycle, in the midst of everything that is going on in our country and in the world at this time, I believe God is asking us, are you ready now? I don't doubt your love for me. I was there when you accepted me, when you entered into your relationship with me. And so I don't doubt your love for me. The question I'm asking is, are you ready to love me the way I want to be loved? You see, Peter's love for Jesus was not in question. He loved Jesus with all that he was. There was evidence of that again and that he dropped everything that he knew, just like us. Our evidence of, of our love for God was shown in that we got up every Sunday and went to service. We, some of us, went to Bible study and Sunday school. Many of us spend time at home uh, reading the Bible and, and spending time in prayer. And let me just also share right here that this discussion tonight is in generalities. This is a general conversation. Some things may be true for you, uh, whereas others may not be true for you. This is a generalization, okay? So I just wanna say that. And so, in the midst of this pandemic, we've had some time to think and to reflect, um, unencumbered by the busyness of the world, because for uh, quite some time, everything came to a standstill. There were a few weeks where we weren't even able to go anywhere except to the store uh, to get uh, food and, and supplies that we needed for the home. So we had some time to think. And so I would challenge you, what were you thinking about? What were you thinking about during that time? When is this going to end? When is this pandemic going to be over? Uh, some of us were grieving the passing of loved ones. But did we hear that small voice asking, are you ready now? Are you ready to love me the way I want to be loved? When we go back to look at the story of Peter, he had already demonstrated his love. That was not what was in question. What was in question was the way that he demonstrated his love. Was it always in line with what God or what Jesus had uh, in line for him to do? His purpose, if you will, in life. Was he displaying that uh, at the time? Loving Jesus, yes, not a doubt. But was he loving Jesus the way Jesus wanted to be loved? 
Was he loving Jesus the way he wanted to be loved when he denied Jesus at first the opportunity to wash his feet? Jesus was demonstrating what servant uh, leadership looked like in that moment. And Peter wanted no part of it, but he loved Jesus though, right? Jesus knew that he came to die and he knew that he had to be captured by the soldiers to be taken uh, and, and tried for crimes he had not committed so that he could be led to the cross and pay a debt for the sin that we ourselves, even in this day and time and in future times had committed. Jesus knew that, but Peter wasn't aware of that. And so out of love, he reacted by cutting off the soldier's ear, but that was not what Jesus wanted. How many of us are loving Jesus the way we want to love him versus the way he wants to be loved? Are we ready now? Are we ready to repent of putting ourselves before God, putting our agendas before God? Are we ready to spend the time required in the spiritual disciplines of prayer and Bible study and, and uh, worship service, the fellowship of the saints? Are we ready to seek God first, to seek him early while he may be found? Are we ready to ask the question, what is your will for my life? Versus, Father, can you come and do this for me? How about, Father, what can I do for you? Are you ready now? When I look at this season that we find ourselves in, I am filled with a spirit of gratitude because I'm still here. It didn't have to be that way. I could be one of the ones that is no longer here. I'm still here. And then I wonder, so why am I here? Am I here so that I can continue doing the things that I was doing prior to this pandemic bringing everything to a standstill? Why would God allow this to happen? Is he trying to get my attention? And if he is, what is he saying to me? And if I'm too busy still trying to do things my way out of love, love is not in doubt. It's not the love that's in doubt. It's are you ready to love me the way I want to be loved? Are you ready now? That is something that I believe the Lord wants us to ponder because time is short. And, you know, we don't like saying that. We want every message to be positive and, and upbeat and hallelujah. And that was all right. But God loves us too much to give us too much of a good thing. Sometimes there needs to be a moment of silence, a moment of reflection and a moment where we can look to God to be reminded of what it is he wants of us. Are we really treating everyone the way we ourselves want to be treated? Are we loving God with all our hearts, minds, and souls, and then loving our neighbor as ourselves? That's the way God wants us to love. Is that what we're doing? Or have we joined in with the rhetoric of the day and talking about and complaining about everything that the other side does, no matter which side <laughs> you're on. Is that what we're doing? Are we battling hopelessness and despair because what's happening has caused us to forget that God is in charge, that he is in control of all things, that he knows all things and that he can do all things. Have we forgotten that? Have we forgotten that we are the salt of the earth, that we are the light of the world and that we have the information that others need so that they too can be encouraged and have hope renewed in their lives? Are you ready now? Are you ready to love God, to love Jesus the way he wants to be loved? so that it's not my will, but thy will be done. See, Peter already loved Jesus 
and that love was more than evident. There were times where he was spot on. Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the son of God. Spot on. He was spot on when he dropped everything and followed after Jesus. He was spot on. But there were some areas in his life where he was unaware that he was not loving Jesus the way Jesus wanted to be loved. He thought he was. Jesus, I'd be with you even unto death. That's what Jesus said. I mean, that's what Peter said. And he meant it out of love. But then things happen. Situations occur. Circumstances present themselves and we're caught off guard. And what's really in our hearts is exposed. The fear, the fear of death was exposed in Peter at that moment. But Jesus already knew it and had already prayed for him. And he seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us even now. He is our mediator and our advocate. And he is saying to God the Father, I paid the price for them. They belong to me. And though they may not have done everything the way uh, you want them to do it, their love for me and for you is evident because they have accepted me as Savior and Lord. And now speak to them and ask them, are you ready now? Are you ready to love me the way I want to be loved? Are you ready to respond to my commands in obedience? Are you ready to yield your will to mine? Are you ready to be used as a light and as salt to season the earth with the love of Christ that we can only do because we ourselves have received that love. Are you ready now? It's a great question to ponder. In the book of Acts, I believe it's chapter 17, it says that times of refreshing comes when we repent and allow the Holy Spirit to come and to fill us afresh once again. I'm paraphrasing. And so this is not a, you know, beat me down when you, read the scripture, uh, John chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. Jesus was not reprimanding Peter. He was not beating him down. He was just asking the question, are you ready now? Do you love me? And if you love me, then do what I've asked of you. All of us are not called to preach. All of us are not called to teach. We, we are all called to be the light and salt of the earth. And so are you ready? Are you ready now? Hallelujah. I pray that this question, that this brief discussion has been a blessing to you. I pray that you spend some time really thinking about it. Uh, I come against the spirit of offense uh, that would say, um, you know, she don't know me. How she know what I'm doing? I don't. I don't know you and I don't know of what you are doing. This is a message that the Lord placed on my heart and he always speaks first to the person that is bringing the word. So this is something that I've had to deal with and, and continue to deal with myself. Am I really loving Christ the way he wants to be loved? And he's giving me the opportunity to make a change if a change is necessary. And that we can only answer individually. You may be doing everything right and hallelujah and praise God uh, for you. And so then it's important for you to be that example for others so that they too can know uh, how to love God the way he wants to be loved. Um, for me, there's some areas of my life I need to look at uh, and it may be the same for you. And God is showing his love for us and giving us the opportunity to do so. And so I am grateful and I pray that you are as well. I pray that you are, uh, will come back tomorrow to hear Lift Every Voice, the Bible study brought to us by our very own uh, Pastor Dana Owens. Uh, it has been a wonderful study where we get to hear both uh, biblical uh, characters, but also historical uh, people from our own from our own uh, lives, people that we've heard of or that we've uh, had opportunity to see and hear ourselves. And so make sure that you tune in and, and 
uh, sit for that study as well. Let us look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your love that is unconditional and eternal. We thank you, Father God, for your mercies that are new each and every morning, and that every day that you allow us to see gives us opportunity to align with your will and purpose for our lives. You have already shown your love for us in sending your only begotten son, Jesus, who freely gave his life that we might have life in him. And we have responded to that love with a yes to the gift of Jesus. It is now our desire, Lord, to ponder the question that you have placed to us today. Are we ready now? We will look over our lives, Lord. We will reflect over our past and ask that you reveal any areas in our lives where we have gone astray, for it can be subtle and may not be readily uh, evident to us. But we know that you know all things and that you can do all things. And so show us where we have gone astray. And we thank you in advance for the opportunity to repent and to return to you in those areas. We thank you, Father God, for a place where we can gather and have these type of discussions, Father God, where we can uh, hear from you and then take some time and think about what you've said. We thank you for your word, oh God, that endures throughout all generations. And we thank you, Father God, for being who you are. You are our healer and our provider. You are our way maker, oh God. You are our comforter and our friend. You are our father, hallelujah, our covering, our shelter, hallelujah, and the light that guides our way. And so we ask, oh God, that whatever we have need of, healing in our bodies, provision, Father God, whatever it is, we ask that you be who we need you to be in our lives. Bless every household represented on this call, oh God, and show yourself mighty and strong, for we acknowledge that you are the true and living God, and that there is no other God beside you, and it is our heart's desire to love you the way you want to be loved. So in response to your question, are we ready now? We say yes, Lord. We are ready. Have your way in our lives, and we will be mindful to give you all glory honor, and praise. It is in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening, and hopefully we'll see each other on the call tomorrow. God bless.